Friends, few times people who have struggled in their faith have asked me about the Eucharist. They've struggled to come to Mass and Mass has not been effective in their lives and they've questioned the Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist has great effects. God, in, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, works silently within every individual. There are fruits of the whole, there are fruits of receiving Holy Communion. So let's take a quick look at what those fruits are. Holy Communion augments or increases our union with Christ. The principal fruit of receiving Eucharist and Holy Communion is an intimate union with Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Indeed, the Lord said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Life in Christ has its foundation in the Eucharistic banquet. As the living Father has sent me and I live in and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me or he who eats me will live because of me, says Jesus. Second, what material food produces in our bodily life, Holy Communion wonderfully achieves in our spiritual life. This growth in Christian life needs the nourishment of Eucharistic Communion, the bread for our pilgrimage until the moment of our death when it will be given to us as a viaticum, as food of the angels, as food for our journey. So what we've received at baptism, Holy Communion preserves, increases, and renews the life of grace that we've received at baptism. Thirdly, Holy Communion separates us from sin. The body of Christ we receive in Holy Communion is given up for us. Jesus gave his body and blood up for us also and shed, and shed for us actually the many as, as we pray at Mass, shed for many the forgiveness for our sins. For this reason, friends, Eucharist cannot be Eucharistic communion cannot unite us to Christ without at the same time cleansing us of our past sins and also preserving us for our, preserve, preserving us, us from our future sins. That's the third fruit of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, as bodily nourishment restores lost strength, so the Eucharist strengthens our charity which tends to be weakened in our daily living. And this living charity wipes away the venial sins. By giving himself for us, to us, Christ revives our love and enables us to break our disordered affections, attractions, attachments, concupiscence to creatures and roots ourselves in him, not in sin. In continuing that thought by the same charity that it kindles in us, Holy Communion preserves us from future mortal sins. The more we share the life of Christ and progress our friendship with Him, the more difficult it is for us to break away from Him by the act of mortal sins. Eucharist is not ordered to the forgiveness of mortal sins, that is proper to the sacrament of reconciliation. Eucharist is properly the sacrament of those who are in full communion with Christ and his church. Fourth, the Holy Communion produces unity with the mystical body of Christ. The Eucharist makes the church. Those who receive the Eucharist, we who are present and are going to receive the Eucharist are united more closely to Christ 
as we receive his body, soul, and divinity. Through it, Christ unites all of us in one body, the church. Communion renews, communion strengthens, communion deepens our incorporation into church already achieved in the sacrament of baptism. In baptism, we are called the adopted sons and daughters of Christ. We are called to be in union with the one body of Christ. The Eucharist fulfills that call. Remember Paul's words, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The, the bread that we break, is it not our participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. And that is why this 11 o'clock Mass is so significant. It is because we are one body, but not because of language that separates us or culture, but we come together because it's one body in Christ that we gather to celebrate this Eucharist. And we've got to do it at least a few times during our liturgical year. I know some of us don't like it, but hey, this is what Jesus says to us. If you want to be one body in Christ, unite with those who may look different or act different or speak differently or culturally. That's how we bond with the mystical body of Christ. And my hope is, I know you love the 830 Mass, my hope is you'll come back for the procession of the Eucharist at noon and then we will celebrate with that procession as one body in Christ, witnessing to our community and the message that Jesus gave to St. Juliana. And then we will celebrate with the second meal that we need for our bodily nourishment. And finally, friends, the Eucharist commits us to the poor to receive in truth the body and blood of Christ given up for us. We must recognize Christ in the poorest of the poor, his brothers and sisters. So as the Eucharist invites us, it is my hope that you will recognize these gifts, these fruits, these great effects of Holy Communion, and prepare yourselves wholeheartedly every time you come to Holy Communion. Because when we come in faith, hope, love, and without uh, moral sin and grade of state and full communion with Church of Christ and his, what he teaches, this is what you get. Seriously, this is what you get today as you come to receive Holy Communion and His Word and the Eucharist. These are going to be the effects in your soul, in your being, as you believe in the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. May the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.